Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel for my 24 week pregnancy update. Now, I just wanna say, if I look a little rough, it's because I'm feeling a little rough. I haven't done anything to my hair today. This is just like yesterday's hair, and I just ran a brush through it really quick. But between me doing Vlogmas, being 24 weeks pregnant, and having my daughter and my husband sick in some way or another for the past month. Oh, hi, Miko. I am just like, I want to nap for like 12 years. <laughs> but anyways, I'm going to be going over everything that has been going on, all my symptoms and stats and everything like that from weeks 22 to 24. Okay, so we'll go ahead and start out with week 22. And at week 22, I weighed in at 132.2 pounds. And the first symptom that I put, which was a horrible, horrible symptom that I kind of forgot about until this happened, is leg cramps and this doesn't really happen during the day but it's like in the middle of the night when i'm dead asleep and i get a charlie horse in my calf and oh my gosh it's the worst like i've gotten charlie horses before but when you're pregnant for whatever reason like you're more prone to them but i think one of the reasons that kind of like sparked the leg cramp for me that night was the day prior i did legs so I'm thinking that that probably had something to do with it, but I seriously woke up in the middle of the night, <laughs> like I was like moaning and groaning and trying to get comfortable and I felt like I was gonna cry. But needless to say, like they're totally harmless. They're just part of being pregnant, but they're extremely painful. And luckily I've only experienced that one that I can remember and I haven't had any more. But you know, now that I've said that, I'll probably get one tonight. I also noted that I was getting headaches this week and I haven't really been getting headaches that much like in this past week, but for some reason during week 22, I was definitely getting headaches and I remember getting them with my daughter Anastasia as well. And I don't really know what the cause of them is, but I know that they kind of come and go all throughout pregnancy. I don't know if this is, you would consider this a pregnancy symptom. I guess weird dreams are a pregnancy symptom. But anyways, I had a dream that I went into labor and I was able to push out the baby in like two minutes and it was totally fine and it didn't hurt and I was like why is everyone freaking out like childbirth is nothing this doesn't feel like anything but my whole experience there was ruined because for whatever reason in my dream Johnny took me to this random hospital that we had never been to that was out in the middle of nowhere and it was like really not the nicest place and it looked like it was built in like 1960 and had never been updated since then like it was super outdated super old super like not up to health code standards and I was so upset the whole time like I was happy I was able to have the baby perfectly fine and everything went well with that but for whatever reason I was so hung up on the fact that Johnny took me to the wrong hospital and the last major thing that happened during week 22 was that we had our 22 week anatomy scan and appointment and from what I get to oh I actually forgot to now that I'm talking about this I remember something else um, when we were there I had an ultrasound that was like the anatomy scan and then we just had like the checkup afterwards where they just talk to you and ask you how you're feeling and da, 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 all that so during my ultrasound I because you're in there for like 20 minutes and they have to like check for the like all the things on the baby make sure they're like their heart is okay and their brain and all their limbs are good and stuff like that and I remember when I was laying there, I was probably, I'm not even exaggerating here, I was probably about 10 seconds away from passing out. And this happened to me before when I was pregnant because we had to go to the hospital for like a, um, a specialist appointment because I was taking a medication before I got pregnant. They wanted to make sure it wasn't interacting with my body during my pregnancy. So I had to go to the hospital for that. And when I was there, I passed out on the table when they were doing the check. And I think I was around like 28 weeks when they were doing this. Maybe, I don't know, somewhere around there. But they, the girl was doing the ultrasound and I remember it being so hot in that room and I was literally laying flat on my back and she was like, you know, doing what she's supposed to be doing, but I passed out. And I remember Johnny said that was the first time he ever saw me pass out and he thought I was dying and having an exorcist because my eyes rolled back in my head and I was like shaking and stuff like that. And for whatever reason, that's what happens to me when I pass out, I like, I go all crazy like that. But this last appointment that we had, I felt like I was gonna pass out. And luckily the ultrasound technician noticed that I was getting a little bit, you know, on edge. And it wasn't that I was afraid to speak up. I was just trying to see if it would pass. Cause sometimes like 
when you're about to pass out, if you're someone that's prone to it, you can almost like kind of pull yourself back together. Like, okay, we're fine. Just breathe normal. Like it's okay. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. And I think honestly, if I would have not like just kept going like that, I probably would have passed out. But I'm glad that she noticed that. And she was like, go ahead and turn over on your side and we'll keep doing it that way. And I was fine after a couple of minutes, but that was scary because any, I mean, passing out in general is scary, but passing out when you're pregnant is like 10 times more scary in my opinion. But we had the anatomy scan, everything looks great. He's measuring right on track. And then afterwards we had our little checkup where I talked to the doctor and this was an interesting checkup because there's not anything that was said that I didn't already know, but I just feel like there's, let me just explain. Okay, so she, the doctor that I saw, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but there are several doctors at my office because they just want you to see everyone who is there. So just in case you go into labor, you are familiar with, I mean, you at least meet every doctor there. I think there's like six or seven doctors total. But with this particular doctor, um, she was asking me about my birth plan because I haven't talked to her before about it. This is my first time seeing her this pregnancy. And she basically just said like, she asked me if I knew what the risks of having a VBAC were. And I told her, yes, you know, uterine rupture, da da da. And then she goes on to say, well, yeah, you know, the worst case scenario is you'll die and your baby will die. And I'm like, oh, okay. And like, Obviously, I know that. I mean, with any childbirth, that's always a risk. But, like, I get that my situation, there's a higher risk for it. But I was just, like, so, like, why would you tell me I'm going to die? Why would you tell me and my unborn child that we're going to die and, like, we're not even there yet? I, ju I just thought it was so strange that she said it, like, flat out like that. And I kind of felt like she was almost encouraging me to get a repeat C-section, which, if you guys have not been keeping up with my pregnancy so far, I... And like, either way, I want to try for a VBAC if I go into labor on my own before 39 weeks, but if we don't make it to there and, and we make it to the point where we are at our repeat C-section when it's scheduled, then that's fine as well. I honestly just want to do whatever is the safest. I'm not like trying to push for one or the other, like super hardcore, because I feel like when you have a certain idea of how you want your birth experience to go and it doesn't go that way, it can just kind of ruin the whole thing and you have a lot of resentment and just kind of anger and just being upset about the whole thing and I don't want that. Whichever is the healthiest route for myself and my baby, that's what I wanna do. But I was just kind of like surprised that she said that so bluntly to me like that. So that's everything that happened in week 22. So now I'll be going over all of my stats from week 23 to 24, which is today I am 24 weeks. Today at 24 weeks, I weighed in 133 pounds exactly, which is a 0.8 weight gain from the past two weeks. So, so far, technically, before I got pregnant, I weighed 127, and then, like, as soon as I got pregnant, like, a week or two went by, and I lost, like, two or three pounds, but pre-pregnancy, I was 127, I'm 133 now, so I've technically gained six pounds this entire pregnancy, but I think my weight gain is kind of regulated by now, like, I'm steadily gaining, like, how I was before in my previous pregnancy, so that is good. So this is what the baby currently looks like. I'm trying not to get the ring light in it. This is what the baby currently looks like on the Pregnancy Plus app. And this is the actual size. Like if you were to hold the baby up against your phone, that would be the actual size of the baby right now. And then on this app, I like that it has a, a few different like comparisons for the size of the baby. And it says that the baby is the size of a chocolate cake or a bunny, which is really cute. I think that's actually really cute because he's gonna be born right before Easter. And then it also compares it to the size of a papaya. And now for the bump app, my bump app, like I've said a million times before, they send me like a quick little newsletter with like just fast facts about the current week that you're in. And on the bump app, it says that the baby compares to the size of a cantaloupe. So you get a rough estimate of what size the baby is. And the baby is roughly 11.8 inches, which is basically a foot, 12 inches and around 1.3 pounds baby's see-through skin is gradually becoming more opaque and baby's got a new pink glow thanks to the small capillaries that have recently formed so that is everything but i also did want to mention i don't know why i haven't seen this in any of the apps but i remember when this happened when i was pregnant with anastasia 24 weeks is technically considered viability week which means that if the baby were happened to be born now he would have a chance of survival before this point there would be like slim to no chance at all of him surviving which 
we're obviously not even close to wanting to get him out or have him born or anything like that but it is reassuring to know that if something crazy were to happen and he was born now or anytime soon that at least there is that chance of survival rather than none at all so i that's really exciting for me and it makes me feel a little more like at ease and i know that i mean honestly with pregnancy there's no safe zone i mean even after your kids are born like you always are worrying about them but as far as just actually being pregnant goes and like fetal development i think that's a really cool milestone to hit in your pregnancy so let's go over everything that i have been feeling and all of that good stuff from this past week the first thing that i put actually let me preface this symptom with something else i have been peeing non-stop i'm at that point where i have to pee like every 20 minutes and it's not like oh i have to pee and it's like i'm only peeing a little bit no like i have to pee like a racehorse every 20 minutes and it's probably because i'm drinking a ton of water but i mean regardless it's, i think it's because my bladder is smaller because he's pushing down on it so there's not as much room for it to expand and like fill up anymore so i'm always having to pee which brings me into my next symptom and that is i've had so much trouble staying asleep like i can fall asleep fine for the most part but the staying asleep part has been so rough because i'm getting really like my body is starting to get really uncomfortable my belly is bigger my back is hurting like just trying to fall asleep is really hard or i shouldn't say falling asleep staying asleep is really hard and then on top of that i'm peeing all the time so i get up to pee probably like two or three times a night after i fall asleep between the time that i wake up so i'm not sleeping all the way through the night ever which is so aggravating i hate like having to get up and going pee in the middle of the night especially when i'm just like trying to readjust and like i'm comfortable and then i'm like crap i have to go pee so that's been a thing that has been happening this past week another thing that goes hand in hand with what i just said about my belly being bigger in my body and all that is that i've noticed that i think i feel like from the very beginning my first pregnancy update i was saying that i couldn't catch my breath i have to like breathe in really heavy every time i'm talking for more than a couple of seconds because i lose my breath so easily but now it's like when i'm just sitting i kind of have to like lean back and take a breath for my lungs to fully expand and be able to get a full breath in because again this baby is taking up so much room now that everything is just getting squished around and is not able to like function the way it normally does so i i've noticed that a lot that i've had to like lean back and take a breath when i feel like i can't breathe the next thing that i notice is that i'm getting fuller more easily like i have the appetite now which is great because in the beginning i just didn't really want anything but now i definitely have the appetite for food but it's just like i eat maybe half my meal which is like a normal size meal not like i'm not doing any crazy portions or eating for two or anything like that but I'm having my normal size meals and I always try to make things healthier wherever I can. And I, I just feel like I'm eating at a buffet. Like everything just feels like it's so much and I know it's really not. And it's weird because again, I have the appetite for it, but I just feel like my body doesn't have the room for it. Another fun symptom is that I have noticed another increase in vaginal discharge this week. And it kind of has just been like steady throughout pregnancy, but I... It's just one of those things that like the closer you get to your due date, it's just it's just something that's just there when you're pregnant and the longer you are pregnant, the more you have usually. But I mean, some people are lucky and it just kind of like stagnates and doesn't get any worse. But for some people, for most people, you just like get more and more of it the closer you get to your due date. So that's a really fun symptom. Okay, and so this last thing that I want to talk about is all about my emotional state this past week because... I'm sure it has something to do with the fact that I'm starting to realize that I'm over halfway through this pregnancy and a mix in the chaos of life lately with everything plus the holidays and all of that and I've just been feeling so I don't know it's just it's been hard this past week and I ha I'm not really someone that gets super down or anything like that about stuff very often like I get aggravated and annoyed and stuff like that with like little things that happen throughout my day I'm not normally someone that's just constantly like you know just feeling you know sad or like nothing good happens and i trust me i've been in that place before i suffered really really bad from depression a few years ago and ever since then ever since i've like you know come out of that i'm a totally i, I wouldn't say i'm a totally different person but i just my mindset is not even close to the same as what it was when i was like in the like the depths of my depression but with that being said, I've just, this past week, it's just been so hard for me to just, like, cope with everything. Like, everything is making me more upset. I just feel more, 
I don't know. I, I find myself wishing that I had like a really good support system of people that I could like that I could call and they would listen to me and they would be like, I'm here for you. Let me help you or, you know, things like that. But it's hard when, you know, especially this time of year when everyone it's the holidays and that kind of thing. It's hard to, I don't know if I, I it's hard for me to explain this because I don't want to make it seem like I have nobody in my life that supports me at all, but it's just, there's so much going on with everybody that, you know, people don't, you know, you go about your day, you don't think about everyone else throughout your day. You're mostly concerned about what you're doing and stuff like that. And I don't know why, but it's been bugging me. I just feel like I, I just want someone to be like, are you okay? How are you feeling? How was your pregnancy? And, you know, I don't want anyone to worship the ground I walk on or, you know, put a crown on my head, but... I've just been feeling like I need more like love and attention lately and it's a tough this time of year when it's super busy and you know like I've said a million times people have their own lives to worry about which is fine and normal but for whatever reason that's made me extremely emotional and on top of that I've, been, I've just been feeling like really unprepared for this baby because I kid you not when I say we have a handful of diapers in our bathroom closet and we have one onesie and that is basically it and I'm so... I know everything will get figured out. I know it'll be fine. I know that this baby is not gonna go without anything that he needs, but it's just the like the reality of the fact that we're gonna have a baby in a few months and there are things that need to be done before he gets here is just kind of giving me a little bit of, I wouldn't, I don't know if I would say anxiety. I'm just, I just wanna get it done so I know that it's done and I don't have to worry about it like a week before I give birth. I guess to wrap up this whole thing, I'll just say that it's been tough for me mentally this past week. I've just been feeling more emotional, more, like I said, more in need of support and like love and stuff like that. And I never want to come off as someone that is like unappreciative or just alone because I'm not alone or anything. But, you know, sometimes you just need a little extra TLC, especially when you're pregnant and it's the holidays and you're doing all the things. That is just something that has been... A little bit hard to handle this past week so that is it for my 24 week pregnancy update I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video and if you guys are expecting please go ahead and leave me a comment down below and let me know how you've been feeling and what symptoms you've been experiencing or if you can relate to anything that I've said during this video also if you guys did like this video please make sure to give it a thumbs up don't forget to stick around for the very end to see my 24 week belly shot and please hit that subscribe button. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. I never thought in the wildest dream I'd see you again. Never dreamed about nothing else other than you.